Alright, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today we're going to show you how to turn your tomatoes into some fresh homemade ketchup that tastes just like the name brand. Alright, one of the things that happens to me every year is I end up with a whole bunch of these little cherry tomatoes and uh, they're only good for so many things. We got a lot of volunteers that came up from last year and just plants growing all over the yard. I literally have thousands of these so uh, looking for something good to use them for. I know there's some other uses but uh, one of the best things i found is just a whole bunch of these can be used in, in ketchup. And so today I'm going to run you through a recipe. Um, it's all over the internet. It's a very common ketchup recipe. We tried it here a few weeks ago and it's very, very good. It tastes almost exactly like the, the name brand ketchup uh, that you can get at the store um, and just an excellent way to use up uh, your, your end of the season uh, garden tomatoes. So I'll run you through the recipe here and show you how we're getting this put together. Alright, so once you've got all your tomatoes harvested, the first thing you want to do is just get them all rinsed off, get them nice and clean. Alright, so we've added in some other kinds of tomatoes here as well. I've got some of these uh, Romas and some hybrids and some beefsteak tomatoes as well. So we use uh, whatever we have available in the garden. So basically all you need to do to get these ready is just kind of core each one. We're not going to blanch these. We're not going to worry about taking the skins off uh, because we're going to have to strain this out later and so we don't really care about that stuff. Best thing to do is just cut these into quarters really quickly for the larger tomatoes and scoop out as many of the seeds as you can. It just makes the uh, boiling them down a little bit easier later on. You don't have to be too picky about it. Just scoop, scoop out the majority of them, whatever you can see. Nothing goes to waste. Alright, and so as you're getting these cut up and the seeds uh, scraped out of them, um, I found it easiest to use a scale for this because what we need is 56 ounces per batch. So that's the kind of the base batch that you'll do. We're going to do a few batches here today. But uh, just zero your scale out uh, with some type of a bucket on there. And make sure we've got ounces set. And just go ahead and throw your tomatoes in as you're cutting them up and then you know when you've got one batch. So we'll keep on going here. All right, so we've got just over 56 ounces there. Um, in terms of how many cups of tomatoes this is, I would say this is probably about between four and five cups, about four and a half cups um, of tomatoes. Uh, if you're using cherry tomatoes, it doesn't hurt to throw a little extra in there, but uh, the recipe is very forgiving as far as how many tomatoes you use because you're gonna cook it down so much that uh, it's not gonna make a huge difference whether you're at you know um, four cups or five cups. So anywhere in between there is probably fine. So the next thing we're going to do here is just get this thrown into a food processor and blend this all up uh, very, very finely. Now if you don't have a food processor, a blender will work, um, but there's definitely a big difference between an actual food processor and a blender, and this is kind of cooking 101, but something that I learned years ago. Um, you know, a blender is really just meant to kind of pulverize things. It doesn't necessarily have sharp blades. Um, a food processor has razor sharp blades, I mean if you touch those blades it will cut your finger. Um, and it's meant to, to really finely chop uh, chop food together. So we're just going to whip this in here a few times and get this blended down. All right, and we're just going to get that on the stove and start cooking it down. And if you're doing multiple batches, just let this run while you're as you're processing your tomatoes. But you want to have this on high. And uh, this is going to take probably a couple hours to really cook it all the way down to where we want it. So you just want to let that boil and simmer. You don't want to cover it or anything. Just trying to cook all that water off. Okay, so as this is cooking here, basically the idea is to reduce this uh, down to almost a paste or by half. And uh, this is just a single batch here. I'm going to be adding to this here and do quite a few batches today. But uh, once you get it in there and start cooking, you can go ahead and start adding your, your ingredients or your seasonings to it. And so we want to start with three quarters cup of white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, two thirds cup of sugar, 
one teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, one and three quarters teaspoons of salt, an eighth teaspoon of ground mustard, an eighth teaspoon of celery salt, and one quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And the last thing we need is one clove. And now that we have all the seasonings in here, uh, we'll just keep stirring this every once in a while here. Just make sure it doesn't start sticking to the bottom once it starts uh, to cook down. And again, we want to cook it down basically in half or until it is, uh, you know, the consistency basically of ketchup. So you can just keep an eye on it and keep, uh, keep boiling it down. A lot, of, a lot of recipes will tell you to do this in a slow cooker. Not a big fan of that, uh, unless you want to dedicate a whole entire day to, you know, stirring the, the crock pot every hour to make sure it doesn't start to stick to the bottom and all that good stuff. You can do this in a couple hours while you're processing the rest of the recipe or, you know, cleaning up or whatever, and just let this cook down here on the stove. All right, so once your tomato mixture has cooked down about 50 to 60 percent, of what it started with then you're ready to start straining and I've got one of these stainless steel strainers here just to kind of set over a bowl and I'm going to use a ladle to just ladle that in there and then you want to press it through the strainer you want to get as much of the liquid out as you possibly can and you'll be left with kind of a paste so we're getting all the skins and seeds sorted out of this and those little cloves, you'll see a little black clove in there. And once we press this all through, we'll do it again. So we're just going to press it all through here. Um, if you found that you didn't let it cook down far enough and your, your ketchup is real runny, once you're done pressing it all through here, then you can just throw it back on the stove and cook it down a little further. Alright, so this is the kind of the final product here. It looks like it is still a little bit thin. As it cools down, it will definitely thicken, but I still think we might, uh, we might throw it back on the stove just to cook it down a little bit further. But this is uh, beautiful. It smells so good. It smells just like the, the, the name brand ketchup. So we'll, we'll cook it down a little bit further before I can it. Alright, I've cooked it down a little bit further and it's still a little bit thin, but once this cools down, it should be the perfect thickness. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, getting it canned. I'm not going to go through that whole process. So it's basically standard canning, water bath canning. Uh, we had to throw it in the jars and uh, put it in the water bath for about 45 minutes. So this is the, uh, the end result. Homemade ketchup, just as good as the stuff in the bottle.